Those eyes were mine to love and cherish, to guard and guide along life's way. Oh, God forbid that one should perish, that one at last should go astray. Back in the years with all together Around the place we'd romp and play So lonely now I oft times wonder Oh, will they come back home someday? Some for my precious children, they live so far away. Oh, mayday, hear back home calling and come back home. So I brave life's storms, defy the tempest to bring them home from anywhere. I live my life, my love I gave them to guide them through this world of strife. I hope and pray we'll live together in that great land here after life. I'm lonesome for my precious children. They live so far away. Just devastation after a hurricane, I ain't never seen nothing like it, you know. And we have just lost a piece of the building. On August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina swept ashore on the Louisiana coast. Among those communities devastated by her impact were the small Homa Indian settlements in Lower Plaquemines, Lower St. Bernard, and Lower Jefferson parishes. The population of these Indian settlements, some 3,500 tribal citizens, was hit hard by the storm. Over 1,000 were left homeless, their residences completely destroyed by wind and water. As the tribe struggled to bring aid to its citizens and channel its few resources to their benefit, another tragedy loomed on the horizon. Hurricane Rita entered the Gulf of Mexico and tracked westward toward Louisiana. At risk was the core of the Homa Indian population that resides in the lower bayou region of the Lafouche and Terrebonne parishes. While some of the Homa Indians avoided the direct impact of Katrina that had devastated the eastern communities, the near miss by Rita pushed a massive storm surge into the bayous, and the more populous settlements in Lower Terrebonne were flooded. The tribe now had an additional 4,000 of its citizens with houses devastated by the effects of this new storm. Through the course of these twin disasters, 
The Homa communities of Dulac, Grand Caillou, Montague, Pointe aux Chênes, and Ile Jean Charles were inundated with seven to eight feet of water. There was no significant aid made available to the Homa nation by federal sources. The United Homa Nation is a state-recognized tribe and does not have federal recognition. They have been in the process of trying to obtain recognition from the United States government for over two decades. It's not just hurricanes and uh, it's a lot of coastal erosion as well that's affecting our communities. Uh, it doesn't take much of a high tidal surge or the winds blowing a certain way that we're starting to have water in our yards just on a daily basis. And so it's a frightening thought and it's something that we're having to address as a people and as tribal leaders is what are we going to do to maintain our communities. And it's no small task because we're looking at our heritage, we're looking at our identity being tied to that land. We have lived here for generation after generation and it scares all of us to think what coastal erosion as well as hurricanes uh, and the way the effect they're having on our communities and so it's something that we're having to address and not in the future but today as we speak. And by 1959 we could go up to 8th grade. There was no schooling after that. So if you wanted a high school diploma you were encouraged to sneak into New Orleans and pass off as a Mexican or other ethnic group but as an Indian there was no schooling for you. I live right now in Homer right now because I can't live down here right now because I don't have no lights and no water because I got to go up before I get lights and water and I don't have that kind of money yeah Rita made a lot of damage say we don't need no more help but I don't know how we don't need no help I mean we don't have anything to especially here we don't have anything to cook on we don't have no ice box to put the food in so I mean I don't know I mean, like they say, they say the president did a flyover, but we've seen pictures of the flyover. The flyover is nothing much to see. I mean, there's a lot of grass and a lot of water. I hope that's not what they go by to help us with, because then we're not going to get anything. They're going to think it's just swamp over here, you know? But I've heard that he helped Texas and he helped Florida. But that's where he's from and that's where his brother's governor at. So, I mean, you know, but what about Louisiana? You know, they're saying that, they saying that FEMA, Texas and New Texas, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida doesn't have to pay FEMA, but Louisiana does. And why just us? Why would just Louisiana? I mean, Texas and Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, they don't need to pay back FEMA, so why we have to? I had an insurance adjuster that came out. I have insurance with National Flood, and a uh, lady came out and inspect my damages, and she tells me that, uh, you know, I had enough damage, I would be paid my full policy. She tells me my policy was for 17900 And I told her, I said, no, ma'am. I said, I have a copy of my policy. And I said, my policy is 26200 So she asked me to go and get my policy, and she made a copy. And she said she would attach that to my uh, claim. Now, I have a cousin here, which is uh, Melba Mathern at 6427 Shrimpers Row. And the same thing happened to them. The adjuster came out and told them that they would get their full policy and told them that it was for $15,000. And uh, after they left, I came and I spoke with my cousin and she started looking for her policy and she found that her policy is actually for $26,200 also. And, uh, you know, she's, I guess she's trying to call them to let them know that she has a copy of her policy and that's what's going on. The, uh, the effects of coastal erosion over the last uh, 20 years have been horrendous. There, there is uh, no marsh, or at least no significant marsh to, uh, to speak of between the Gulf of Mexico and those settlements in Lower uh, Plaquemines Parish, all the ones in St. Bernard, or in fact for any of them in, in the Homeless Service area. Uh, our communities are completely at risk now from the elements. Uh, Rita proved that. Rita, which was a, a, a huge storm but really didn't have a direct impact on Terrebonne Parish, it, it passed by, but because of the lack of prote natural protection uh, from the marsh, because of the, the lack of, of protection from a, a, an adequate levee system, by the parish, the communities were devastated. If it would have been a direct hit, it would have been horrendous. 
So uh, we find ourselves as a tribe living on the very edge of the Gulf of Mexico now at risk for every storm that enters the Gulf. This is just everything out of our house that uh, as we came every day. Just having to put everything out, you know? Um, things that I've had for some things 27 years, but a lot of things uh, 24 years you know, that I've been keeping from my kids, you know? And that's the hardest part, just having to let go of all the memories and um, we try and keep a few things but you, you end up with a from this to just a very small pile of um, memories you know you and now you just have to have them in your mind and uh, it's really bad so now the uh, throwing out the stuff is done so now we just have to do the rebuilding and start from there start over we we are in a jam right now, a huge jam. And, and federal recognition would, would, open, would open the doors. We could even fix our own people's homes. We could even buy land, relocate our own people. Without that, uh, I, don't, I don't see nothing happening anytime soon. I don't see us buying, going and buy a huge piece of real estate uh, anytime soon. It's, all of that costs a lot of money. And the only way, and that's, that's, that's another thing, everybody that comes to me for an interview, I don't turn nobody down. I believe every little thing you do for your people, every time you speak out for your people, every little bit help. I don't care. We have a lot of people right now helping the homeless. They're from, some of some are from Vermont. New York, California, they're from all over. And if these people's gonna leave from all around the country like that, the state like that, to come and help the Homer, why not open a door for the Homer? Why not give, say, yes, the Homer deserves to have federal recognition. Yes, the Homer needs federal recognition. Yes, they need it because their children need it, because education needs it. Right now, we have a, a young, uh, our chief, her son is in Tucson, uh, Tucson, Arizona, studying Native American law to become an attorney. First one in the Homa tribe. And the Homa tribe needs, needs funds to keep on, to keep going, to keep pushing. My children need it. Their children need it. August Coca Krupel is a musician and storyteller, professional wrestler, and fireman. He is a member of the United Homa Nation, born and raised on the bayous of Louisiana. In this interview with Coco Krupel, he speaks about his experiences as a fireman in the suburbs of New Orleans during the Hurricane Katrina disaster. I work at the city of Gretna Fire Department, been a fireman 23 years. I was down here doing Katrina. I was at work 22 days straight. It was pretty bad down here for a while. We, uh, we had it rough, but each day is getting better and better. There were people out there without water, you know, without electricity, without food. So when we had trucks come in and bring us food, we were out in the streets distributing food. And we were also working six hour shifts around the clock with the Gretna police. And, you know, we were at work at the fire station until one o'clock in the morning when the winds hit 50 miles an hour. And then they moved us to the Gretna courthouse. And we rode it out there for the next 12 hours which, which was pretty rough, you know, I ain't never seen anything like this. The only guys you had there, we only had about 10 people there. Everybody else evacuated out of town. You know, the volunteers were gone and just about 10 operators stood, you know, and that's all we had there, everybody else left. But things got pretty bad. The first week was pretty bad, you know, no, no water, no power, you know, no sewer. I mean, it was five days before we got generators to run power to our station. Before that, we ran the generators on a truck and that's how we ran our radios and kept communication. But we were there for several days without food or anything before FEMA came in and these trucks with these volunteer companies and stuff and brought in disaster relief and then we could start distributing everything. 
just devastation after the hurricane. I ain't never seen nothing like it, you know. People people were shooting at the fire trucks and all of this, and, you know, it was pretty rough out there, you know. We had to do what we had to to survive, and that was the main thing. The people that were out there, they're, they were looting, and the things they couldn't steal, they were trying to burn. And, you know, I, I don't understand why they would try, you know, to hurt the people that are there to help them. They were also shooting at, like, the military helicopters and everything, and these people were going there to help them and get them out of the water and, you know, and rescue these people. We hear things about how, you know, the mayor of New Orleans didn't do what he was supposed to do, and the governor of Louisiana didn't sign a paper for the military to come in sooner. These are the people they need to remember come Election Day. A lot of the houses we saw in this area is, is total devastation and appreciate all the volunteers coming in to help feed the people that needed food and things. We had several different volunteer firemen that came from all over the world, from, you know, uh, Mexico, from from New York, from Texas, you know, from, you know, Ohio, and, you know, Bloomington, Indiana, and different places, and, you know, they came down, and just like a lot of our firemen went up to New York for 9-11, you know, they came back down and, 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 you know, and helped out. And firemen, you know, are like brothers. My own opinion, I always said firemen can't be made, they're born. It takes a lot inside to run into a building where people are running out of. All the devastation, everything our people have been through, you know, been fighting for federal recognition for years. We were here in Baton Rouge. Before they made a map Government in Washington Would not believe it's true That we've been living here Since before they had a car